Hello and a warm welcome to the 2010 Hansbury FIM World Superbike season. Jonathan Green reporting from round two on the Algarve in Portugal. Beautiful spring weather and one of the most exciting and challenging circuits on the calendar. Portimao is near the seaside town of Faro on the south coast, about two and a half hours south of the capital Lisbon. Championship arrives at round two, still buzzing from the drama of Australia, where we saw the closest race finish in the history of the sport, as Leon Haslam beat Michel Fabrizio by just four thousandths of a second. Haslam took his first pole and first win and now leads the championship on the Alstar Suzuki going into Portugal. Carlos Checa also took a win in Australia, his first since 2008, and the Altira Ducati looks as though it too could be a force to be reckoned with in 2010. Seven manufacturers and a unique combination of youth and experience from a rider point of view, with six world champions in all and 14 previous race winners. American world champion Ben Spees won the title here in Portugal last year, but this year it's wide open with up to 10 potential winners every race. Spees may be gone, but two other world champions come in to replace him. Two-time World Superbike Champion James Tozen returns to the fold in a quest to become the first rider to win the title on three different marks. And newly crowned Supersport Champion Cal Crutchlow of Great Britain moves from the feeder series to follow in the footsteps of Spees and try and win in his rookie season. All eyes in Portugal once again on the factory Ducatis of Noriyuki Haga and Michel Fabrizio, who were first and second here last time out and were fast in the pre-season tests held here in January. Michel Fabrizio particularly seems to like the track and the domineering V-Twin seems well suited to the undulating Portimao layout. The Ducati pedigree, it seems, has stood the test of time since the early days of the 70s. Here's our expert Steve Martin to tell us more. They had a philosophy back then that they've held all the way through to 2010 and that philosophy you can see still here today on Noriyuki Haga's um, Ducati 1198. Back then Paul Smart had a steel trellis frame like this one here. Inside here he had desmodronic valves in behind the fairing and a V-twin motor. Ducati have stuck with that philosophy through time and it served them well. They've won 16 manufacturers championships and 13 riders championships in the history of the World Superbike. So who can count these guys out in 2010? Portimao is a four and a half kilometre circuit built only three years ago and it's now one of the fans and riders' favourites, and certainly one that Ducati have excelled in winning three of the last four races held here. And going into Super Bowl, the Ducatis were once again on the pace, but then disaster struck for both Haga and Fabrizio. First of all, Fabrizio fell in Super Bowl 1 and didn't make it to the cut in Super Bowl 2. And Haga mistimed the use of the qualifying tyres, and he would miss Super Bowl 2 too. And that meant the factory Ducatis would start 17th and 18th on the grid, their worst starting position in the championship. It was also doom and gloom for James Tosin, who fell while going for a fifth place start, and he would have to go just ahead of the Ducatis in 15th place after that fall. On the other hand, his teammate Cal Crutchlow blitzed the rest of the field by half a second to smash Ben Spees' lap record and take his first pole position in the process. He would be joined by Max Biaggi, Carlos Checa and championship leader Leon Haslam on the front row. Five manufacturers in the top five places on the grid with expectations of another extremely close race. The factory Ducatis were nowhere to be seen and this was a chance for all the front row contenders to make hay in the sunshine of Portugal. Let's head now to the start of race one. Way they go, good start from the front row, not brilliant by Checa. But Crutch looked going away well. Biagi gets a ripper, look at that. That was brilliant, you predicted that. And sure enough, Massimiliano Biagi leads them into that first corner. Oh, Johnny Ray's gone wide. He has gone wide, but he's okay. And he's slotted back into about 17th place. That helps the Ducatis as they try to get through. Already I can see Fabrizio on the move. Yep, but it is 
up the inside for Brizio there too. He's made a lot of moves. There's Corsa on your screen right now. Corsa's in third, actually. Oh, wow. Troy Corsa gets a blinder. Look at that. Haslam there in second place. And the BMW of Troy Corsa is in third place. Wow. Troy Corsa using all the power of that BMW as they head down to the first corner. It's anybody's game. And Haslam dives into the lead. No intimidation. Oh, Corsa's no, going around no. the outside. Corsa's a bit wide. Oh, and somebody's gone even wider. And into the gravel. Guintoli, that is. That's got to be Guintoli. Sylvain that Guintoli is. holds on to it. And the Frenchman doing a bit of motocrossing. It's so tight through that turn one. There's one line. There's Checker in your screen too. He's done a good job. Shaky burn on the back wheel of Checker. And bit it, bit it, bit it. Look out. Here comes Harger. The 41 is looming. He's up to eighth position already. 44. And here comes Shane point. Byrne. He's made the move. Shane Byrne goes through, and Carlos okay. is going to try and make a move too. Yeah. So the Altera Ducati is really pushing the BMW at the moment. Corsa made a scintillating start off the line, but has since been in trouble. Ran a little bit wide uh, in turn one, but he's held it all together. The BMW seems to have just a little bit more top end. Look at that there. He's got some good big corner speed and nice and tight on the exit. That's a good drive by Corsa out of there. Should, if he slips streams, might be able to get back up into uh, third position. Biashi trying desperately to stay with Haslam, but the Suzuki looking very superior at the moment. Well, Biagi's there. Oh, um, Crutchlow! Oh, he's in the mood. Count yeah. Crutchlow makes another move. We said he isn't scared of anybody. Shane Byrne won't be too impressed with that. Former British champion. Oh, and Harger on Ray. Harger goes through on Ray, or does he? Yeah, Not quite. Oh, no, Ray's still there. Ray's done a good job, because Ray ran, ran wide, and he's managed to pull back up to this group. They're still battling this the top eight. There's James Tozen. It looks as though he's having a challenge now on Camia. Fabrizio's with him in 12. Schmerz is 13. Not a good start by the Czech. Pitt is 14th. That is good for the BMW. Lanzi's 15th and Sykes drops to 16th. Yeggy puts Whoa. in a new lap record, 42.7. And does he take the lead? Yes, into turn one. Can he hold it, though? Yep, he can. Just, just. <laughs> Max Biaggi on 142.7. That is fast as... Top speeds, Yashi 302k, Haslam 298, very similar indeed, Crutchlow 302, behind it's Shane Byrne, Ray, Checker, Corsa, Harder. Oh, round the outside. Can you do that? Yes, yeah, He did, really. he did it, and he got away with it. <laughs> Crutchlow, yeah, but he's got all... We're going to look at Harger, round the outside. It's not going to work up the inside. Oh, it might, might do that, though. And I think, yeah, Corsa, while defending, went wider than he wanted to, and Harger should. Yeah, he's passed. Got by. Yes, he has. Yeah. But now, what happened there? Haslam's gone into the lead. Yeah, we missed that. Haslam's taken the lead again, just as I was about to say that he's going to bide his time. He's gone through. Right, well, what he needs to do now, if he's, if he's in the lead now, he needs to really try and attack as hard as he can. The other thing, here, here we it go. Yeah, he's gone wide. Went wide. That's why. That's that turn one. It's so difficult to get in there right. There's one line in. If you break uh, half a metre too late, you're off the track. Another lap completed. Here comes the Aprilia. Max Biaggi looks like he's going to have a go on the brakes this time up the inside, but he can't do it. That's it's Fabrizio. What's he looking at here? He's I don't know. He's in, in trouble by the looks of things. He's run sure off. Enough, turn he's run one. Off again. There's an example of uh, just going in there a bit hot. Unbelievable for Brizio. Winner here last time out. And uh, uh, nowhere. Languishing down in 12th position. Yeah. Leon's already had one win this year. I'm sure he'd be pretty happy to have two. On the other hand, it's very, very hard to pass here. And we know that Max Biaggi, look at that. See how he goes wide. Nice He's gone move. wide. That's that hairpin. Max Biaggi takes the lead. And with six to go, Leon knows he's got a battle on. Whoa. How about that? That's uh, Pitt Pit or, or Tomata. Is it Tomata. One of the right wagon BMWs. Uh, let's have a look. It's Andrew Pitt, number 88. This is. Um, oh! oh! Crutchlow goes down! God. Just lost it there. And Steve, you've been in this situation. Did he do anything wrong or did he just let go? Up the hill and down the hill. Not likely. Through the big fast kink here. He's not going to be able to do it. But if he can get a good drive up here and just. Let it Sorry. run, if he can let it run on the inside there, or try and cross back and through into the next one, perhaps. It's not going to happen. Down the hill on the inside up here, another opportunity, but Biaggi's got that covered too. This is great racing from Max Biaggi. He's under extreme pressure from the young Englishman. Aslam taking it to him. 
He's not going to dive in here. There's only one corner left. It's going to be hard from here if he can do a slipstream out of the last corner. That's just about going to be it. Biaggi gets good drive out of there on the last lap. And Max Biaggi is headed to his first victory surely now of the season. The Aprilia has looked good in winter testing and looked good in Australia. And now Max Biaggi heads towards the line. Haslam will chase him down. But it is Max who kicks his foot out to give Aprilia their first win of the year and their second win. I say that... The bike uh, w working much better here. You know, in Australia we got a problem, uh, more chatter. You know, the problem on the bumps in Australia they were so so hard. And here, you know, also last year I remember my memory, and it was not so bad during the race. You know, that problem is over. You know, depend on the track. But I need to say, even if the bike was work better here, I know that. Uh, I know that uh, we can make a good race. I know that we can work for the for the top three, and I have to say that also Leon make a great race. And the first few laps uh, was very tough, but uh, I enjoy. You know, I want to thank my team, my squad, all the engineers at home, and Noale, Gigi Dalinia was a head engineer, and everybody. You know, this is a, a great race. I want to dedicate to my little daughter and and Eleonora. That's it. <laughs> It was vintage Max Biaggi who held off the championship leader Leon Haslam in another scintillating race and in the process setting out a brilliant title aspirations. Jonathan Ray wore down Crutchlow forcing a mistake and earning him a valuable podium which also puts him in contention for the title chase. On to race two, and with the same grid positions, Cal Crutchlow would start from pole, gritting his teeth in determined mood to make amends to claim his first World Superbike victory. But Max Biaggi would be out for the double win, something that they've not done yet on the new bike. Haga, Fabrizio and Tozen would try again to force their way through the field. Let's head to the start of race two. Out they go, good start from Biaggi again, and a little bit of a fog, and Crutchlow fails again off the line. Good start from Johnny Ray, but again it's Biaggi who takes the whole shot. What was Crutchlow doing? Great start from Johnny Ray. And where's my Harga watch? Yes, uh, there he is. <coughs> He's up there. He's right up there. And all safely through turn two. But what a start from Johnny Ray. Fifth on the grid and second. There's Crutchlow. He's in about seventh position at the moment. Well, he dyed his hair blonde, but uh, he's not having fun. I thought blondes had more fun, but never mind. You'd better change that. But Leon Cami is up there too. He's got a much better start, starting in sixth position. The British are coming. Biaggi leads the way, though, for Italy. Ray, Haslam, Crutchlow. Corsa's still up there in fifth place. And as you say, Cami is right there too. So we've got five Brits in the top six, or the top uh, seven anyway. Quick Check us there. Look at the Honda. Wow, look at the speed of Johnny Ray. No. Look at the lack of speed compared to the Aprilia. <laughs> yeah, but look how close he is. Yeah, I know, but he got a brilliant drive onto the start-finish straight there. Yeah, Biaggi 298 through the speed trap. Ray, 290. Down the inside and through the basket. Oh, Biaggi had a moment there. He's young. <laughs> yeah, Remember he's right? young and fearless. What a good move by Johnny Ray. That's excellent. Morning, Mr. Biaggi. I'm 22 and I'm hungry. The Aprilia, in theory, should go past him down the straight here now. Let's have a look. And it does. Look yeah, at that. Screams by him. And there's nothing Ray can do. That will be a bit disheartening. Well, and Crutchlow's all over Haslam. Look at the, of, of Max here Biaggi comes now. Haslam. Haslam and, goes past now. Yeah, and that was uh, sheer power there. Whoa! And Johnny's not ready to give up just yet. No, but he's oh, going to have that's, to. That's, you know, that, that, I don't think that was... That was very smart by uh, Johnny, to be honest, because he, well, he knew there wasn't room to go around the outside there. And a faster slap from Crutchlow, 43-4. Puff of smoke there by Johnny Ray, his engine's blown. Oh, no. Yeah, it's over. Oh, no. He's even raced here on the HM plant Honda a couple of years ago, so he knows how to race a superbike around this track. He actually does a 44-1. Crutchlow does a 43 4. And he's, he's right wide. there. Look at him. Yes, he has oh. gone wide. Biaggi runs wide, just gets away with it. That gives you a hint. Biaggi is definitely riding on the limit at the moment. No question about it. It's a pretty good lap time by Checker, isn't it? 43 2. And 43 7 by Tozen on the move right now in eighth position. And only a second off Camia, so he's got the bit between his teeth as well. 
Cameo was so fast at the end of race one. He needs to get the start of the race. There it is, race. that's that battle. Yeah, he needs to get the start of the races sorted out. If he can be fast at the start, he's got the pace to win. 43, um, Cameo last time around, 44.1. But back at the front now, it's a group of four. Checkers coming. Yeah, they are, but the problem is the speed skating race is over quickly. These guys <laughs> it's an hour. Out. Here comes Haslam! <laughs> Up the inside. Into the lead goes the Brett. Can he hold it? Oh, Can he hold it? Yeah, oh, just, just, no, just, but no, he's going to hold it. Crutchlow's going to come and go. Fifth or sixth, but it's going to be difficult for him to get up with this Max group. attack. And... Round the outside. Yeah. Oh, How deep's lovely. He gone? How deep's he gone? No. He made it. Nice and smooth. And that was uh, payback, sir. JT, on the move. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Around the outside. JT takes TC. Good night. Very impressive move right there. Very impressive. Down the hill. He really is getting his act together, isn't he? Look well, at that. Well, you know, uh, the one thing that James knows is that after one bad start in Australia and another bad weekend here, it's not looking good. Checker. They really are pushing now. Six to go after this. Coming out of the last turn. Fourth gear. Flipping it up to fifth as you stand it up. Over to sixth player. Holding the front down. 300k. This right here is the most frustrating part of the circuit for um, Carlos Checker because th that is Leon. Where... Oh, he Ooh, almost outbreaked himself. Can he hold it? Yes. Good move. Good move, Leon Haslam. Oh, oh he's wide. Haslam. Yep. He's wide. Crutchlow's through. And Checker could well be through too. No, he holds on, but Checker could come past yet. But Crutchlow has got what he wanted, and Haslam, more importantly, will be delighted because I think the bigger threat was Biaggi. There he goes. He's got Guintoli, number one. Now he's got Corsa in his sights. He hasn't Whoa! got it just yet, my friend. Oh, no, he hasn't. Sorry. Up the hill and up the inside. No, he's going to get both oh, of them. Oh, no. Go 143 9 again. He's quick, and here comes Biaggi. This is it. Two to go, and Biaggi hits the front. Now that the tyres have worn, there's no advantage or disadvantage. You can dive up the inside here. It's not going to happen. Around the outside here, or up the inside there. He's got, tried to go up the inside. It's not going to happen. Up this hill into the left-hand corner. We saw Haga pass here. No. Not there. Not going to happen here either. Pretty much now, if Max Biaggi doesn't make a mistake, he should be safe. Here we go then, final lap, race two. Aprilia looking for the double with Max Biaggi. Haslam will take him all the way and it's between these two. Checkers holding on to take fourth place and looks as though Crutchlow will make the podium, but it's picture perfect in Portimao for Aprilia. It's a pleasure to be back on, on the, in, the, in the first group, you know, because memory is also back to a month ago in Australia, so that was terrible for me. I have a month... Uh, I was struggling and um, trained so hard, tried to get a rhythm, all the bad, uh, remember, and uh, and then back here, you know, here is, I knew that bike was working better from last year, like race one, we was very competitive, and in this race, in the grip went a little bit down, I see the pace was not as strong as before, but I saw, you know, all three or four, Ria and Crash Club and Leon, all there, I think, because, of course, in race two, everybody also can adjust a little you know race one is a little bit surprise race two you know everyone is going to adjust uh, something and be uh, be there you know it was nice battle some overtake some mistake as always but that's race you know i'm happy happy for uh, aprilia all the tea, all the people is working in noali thanks to them thanks to my family and see you next the perfect weekend for Aprilia and Max Biaggi and they now move to second in the Riders Championship and very much in contention for the title. Aslam's consistency means he stays ahead on a day when the factory Ducatis fell foul in Super Bowl and try as they might they lost ground in the points battle. Three winners now from four races in the most open championship in the series history. After a stunning outing at Phillip Island, where the Park Elgar Honda rider Eugene Laverty won the race by a country mile, he was the obvious favourite for his team's home race here in Portimao. And things were looking good as he headed to the start, having taken the pole position. But the Hondas of former world champion Ken Sofoglu and the Kawasaki of Juan Lascorse would be stiff competition. But so too would the latest young gun to the Tenkata fold, Italy's Michel Pirro, 
who surprised everybody with his pace and would line up third on the grid. Let's head to the start then of round two of the Supersport World Championship from Portimao. And away go the front row, and Sofoglu did get a good start, but so too did Eugene Laverty. Kawasaki, not too bad there. Looks like he's going to slot into... Well, Eugene cuts across. Oh, and uh, nice move from Laverty. Laverty's the man who takes it. And Lascours is in second place, and uh, Keenan Sofoglu gets shuffled back a little bit. Back to about fourth position there. Well, all the front rows started very nicely indeed. Everybody getting off the line well. And it's Eugene Lambie, the pole man, who leads them through the first corners. Fujiwara's there too. Puro's uh, got quite a good start. Oh, somebody down. It's a triumph. And that's a tragedy. Oh! oh that's more than a dice, that. <laughs> Prayer up the inside. Both run wide. And Gino Ria doing a good job of uh, staying in the top ten, given that he just joined the championship. Oh, and going through there into turn one. That's a great overtaking place. But you've got to get it right. You've got to be precise. We learned that in World Superbike. Here come the leaders. And here comes Lascores down the main straight. That's more like it from the Spaniard. Nice and easy does it. And for the first time, Eugene gives up the lead. And Juan Lascores gets his head down. Well, he's got himself in a really good position now. He's uh, got himself on one of the best machines in the championship and um, a good chance at uh, winning this championship. But look at Piro up the inside nice now. Nice move. So the Honda goes through. It's Honda Kawasaki and Honda right now. Third gear, fourth gear now, fifth gear, over the blind crest and into the hairpin. Here back into the second gear. Nice Yep, one. he's done it. But he's run wide and Piro's gone back through. <laughs> Great racing. Yeah, I mean, oh, oh. And he has to lift up. Yep. And that is typical of Foglu. That he is. Sticks it up the inside. Fair, but sticks it right to Piro. Now does the young Italian come back. So Piro's really lost out, hasn't he? Having challenged so close. And here comes Kenan Safoglu up the inside into second place. Nicely done. Yep. Yep, very, very close. And now that Keenan Sofagul is on the back wheel of Eugene Levy too, it's going to give him an opportunity. Look how fast that bike is of Sofagul. And look, he was three tenths quicker and He's now hits past. the front. So Sofagul hits the front with five to go. And Les Gors has gone with him. Well, Laverty is in trouble. He's gone from first to third, trying to get back to second as quickly as he can. But this is Laverty flustered now. 45-7 for Sofagul that time around compared to the scores, 46-0. Laverty struggling a little bit, 46-4, oh, there's Laverty off. Oh, just what they didn't want at home, having had such a brilliant start in Australia. Eugene Laverty throws it down the road and the Irishman will be spitting. That the final slap, here we go. Lascores tries to come alongside, they are side by side as they head down towards the final lap. Lascores tries to break as late as he can and takes the lead. Safoglu tries to go around the outside, it's a dice to the death here, here we go. What a great race it's turned out to be in the end. It was a little bit dull in the middle, but not now. Lavaverty let these two go. There's a back marker in the way, and Lascours has the lead. Yep, this, I think Sofoglu is definitely going to have an attack back in the place that Sofoglu will attack back is into the hairpin. He's good on the brakes into this hairpin down here if he can do it. But uh, Lascours goes in tight and blocks the line. Spain's Juan Lascours. The inside. And there it is, there it is. Move. Is it too much? They no, touch. he's done it. He's done it. <laughs> and that's classic. It's, it's not over yet, it's not over because uh, Lascores can get him back. Kanan Safoglu heads out of the last corner but one Lascores makes one last effort on the Kawasaki to get on level turns so they cross the line, it's going to be close but Safoglu wins! The good thing is my bike is really good this year. Uh, yesterday in qualify I was second but mechanics asked me, asked me how is the bike, I said there's a one problem, I was not good enough but I promise them tomorrow I will show the potential of the bike or in the, in the warm up I put the new lap record on the track and even the race I can do in the beginning of the race I take it a little bit easy after at last part in the race I push take the lead in the last lap the last score was very strong and I try my best to, to beat him because I really want to win this race I'm so happy now because I'm very disappointed in uh, in Philip Biden very happy win here very big, big, big thanks to my team because they give me a really good bike. It was classic tough tactics from Kanan Safoglu, who's now beginning to show the kind of form that won him the world title in 2007. Laverty loses ground, but it's Lascours who heads to the next round at home in Valencia, brimming with confidence, as does Italian Michel Pirro, who claimed his first ever Supersport podium. Plenty to play for as we head next to Spain. 
Another brilliant weekend of racing in the Algarve sunshine. Chodas the Aprilia and now a complete package. And with a double win for Max Biaggi, he moves to second in the championship. Haslam still leads and Suzuki are looking stronger by the race. The factory Ducati's lost ground, but the next round in Spain has been a happy hunting ground for the Bologna team. And once again, it's all to race for as we head next time to the Orange Groves of Valencia, Spain and round three. Until then, from me, Jonathan Green, goodbye for now.